Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2017 here in Busan in South Korea. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Hussein Moin, who is Technology Advisor for Nokia. Hussein, thank you very much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about smart digital transformation. It's the buzzword, it's the theme here at ITU Telecom World. What, what does it mean to you? So to me, uh, smart digital transformation means that we use that our technologies to improve our lives. So in a way, what I mean by that is we are very cognizant of the benefits, but also the pitfalls of new technology. Any transformation will have not only positive, but also some side effects that we need to mitigate and have plans for. And in terms of the greatest opportunities and, and uh, probably and then challenges for, for and then over the next five years, let's say, for smart technologies, what, what are they, they are in your opinion? So I, th I think uh, in the next five years, limiting, the, limiting to that time frame, I think the greatest opportunities is making sure that connectivity is global. That's number one. But also, and in line with what I do on a daily basis, which is develop 5G, is to make sure that the technologies that we develop are applicable to other industries. I think the uh, telecom industry itself is going through a transformation, but more broadly, I think the society will benefit and we can really impact other industries if they use and if they find our technologies useful. So I think that's a real opportunity to be able to transform the healthcare, to be able to transform production, to be able to transform energy, all these things can be viewed as digital networks that we can actually help to transform themselves to solve really difficult challenges such as climate change and at the same time make sure that we're providing the right elements for them to use and solve these problems. Now you talk about challenges, challenges are going to be many but maybe in the next five years the key is diffusing the technology to the broad society but in a manner that respects fundamental human rights, such as privacy, such as security. I think security is an issue that we need to be very cognizant of, meaning that as we live more and more digital as opposed to physical lives, we must make sure that our digital networks, be it energy, be it health, be it communication, are secure so we can rely on them, we can depend on them for the services that they provide. So I think security will be the biggest challenge, but the opportunity is in transforming other industries. And that we, we trust them, obviously. And w w let's focus on 5G. Do you think that 5G will simply increase the digital divide, however we perceive that? And if so, how can we mitigate the impact? I think, uh, from what I've seen, uh, dealing with LTE and looking at past is always a good indication of what will happen in the future. I believe that this may be true initially, but over the course of long term, meaning within the decade, this will no longer be true, meaning that it will help bridge the digital divide. So we've seen this with uh, mobile technologies of the past generation. LTE initially started in developed markets, US, Korea, Japan, and soon it ca caught on everywhere. So now it's a global phenomenon and it's actually helping people to reach not only each other but also information that they will have no way of accessing due to the poor fixed infrastructure. So it actually has reduced the digital divide in many places. I was with uh, one of the telecom ministers from Ethiopia yesterday and he was telling me how they're using smartphones combined with LTE uh, or even 3G networks in remote parts of Ethiopia to discover prices of coffee, to make sure there is a market for it, to make sure that today is the right day to go there. This has definitely been a positive and I believe that 5G will also play similar but maybe more significant role as it not only enables communication between men but also between machine and men and helps transform other industries. And what about the major technological developments and trends at the uh, forefront of this revolution? So I think uh, a couple of things are important uh, from a technology perspective. One is we need a new radio. So one of the uh, elements of 5G is that it's not just about mobile broadband, but it is also about meeting real-time requirements, having the ability to connect hundreds of billions of devices 
on a common fabric. This is challenging. So we need a new radio protocol, and I'm very happy to see ITU and uh, other industry fora lead that effort. We have defined a new radio, which we will be submitting very soon, as soon as next week, to, uh, for review to ITU. Uh, as an industry, this is not Nokia only, but our entire mobile industry in 3GPP. So that radio is perhaps one of the key challenges. I think software and uh, developing a network operating system, which allows the network to be sliced so that you can take the same basic uh, building blocks and configure them in a way that meets the specific requirements and specific applications. This, to me, is also one of the challenges and beauties of the science that we are developing. And this is the concept of network slicing. So we'll highlight those two. Again, adding that security is fundamental and we're building that. And last but not least, maybe an architectural evolution that we're pioneering in creating a mobile edge computing. So really bringing content applications and services very close to they are consumed so that delays between uh, various parts of the network is minimized. Now, Nokia has a long time been a supporter of uh, events like this, IT Telecom World. I wanted to find out what's the value of attending events like this and supporting them? So, I, to me personally, and I think to Nokia as a corporation, uh, we operate on a global scale. ITU is one of the few places where you truly see this diversity. Uh, we do partially educate the uh, global uh, community of telecoms in what is at the forefront of technology, what we're thinking about the evolution of our industry. But equally important, and perhaps even more so, is getting their feedback. Are we meeting their needs? There are very different needs between a market as developed as Korea and markets that are trying to develop, like Sub-Saharan Africa. And they have very different requirements and different ideas. And sometimes they don't even have to do anything with technology. As an example, uh, Korea, the public health system worked incredibly well. In some remote parts of Africa, this is non-existent. We, as telecom in industry, can help with that. We can help with providing care. We can help with providing solutions that seem out of reach, maybe even five years ago. So I think this is important to us to understand their requirements and making sure that what we do helps them solve some of their urgent problems. Now, your job is advising in technology. What's your message for participants here at ITU Telecom World? I think the key message that I would like to leave is that tomorrow will be very different than today. We're at the cusp of having some fundamental changes in computing power, in our software algorithms that enable us to do deep learning, machine learning, and also in our devices and capabilities. I think. The world of five to 10 years from now will be substantially different. So the key is to be flexible and be open. And also, and equally important for the audience here, it is to guard against unintended consequences. Make sure you have the right policies and the right public initiatives that enable the transformation of society from where we are today to a digitally smart society, which is where we hope to end up tomorrow. Hussein Moin, thank you very much indeed. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.